Super Talk Mississippi media production. Campus Book Mart is the one and only stop for the real Southern Miss fan. From hats to sweaters and even jerseys, Campus Book Mart has you covered with all the essentials for the Southern Miss football season. With sizes from toddler to large and in charge, there is no reason to shop anywhere else. Call 601-261-9690 or visit campusbookmart.net. Campus Book Mart on Hardy Street across from USM in Hattiesburg. I'll pre record on my count. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, roll A, fade up on A. Southern Miss to the top. To the top. You're tuned in to the Eagle Hour. All right, good Friday afternoon, everybody. Of all the places we go, there's no place we enjoy more than Ramey Motors here in Purvis. That's where the Super Talk Eagle Hour is today. As Luke Johnson used to say, it is a grown man's paradise. Dakota Baker with us right now. Dima Mixon, Bob Getty, Kelly Sander. We're all down here. Opening segment of the show uh, at uh, Ramey Motors in Purvis. And uh, we wanted to uh, bring uh, Dakota on uh, first. We're going to have Will East coming up with some high school news. And then we'll be talking to Patrick McGee later in the show. But before we get to our picks, we're gonna, we wanted you included on our weekly picks. Another great day down here. And, man, I am impressed with how many four-wheelers you have over here. Yeah, man, there for a while, Honda was struggling getting everything out after COVID. But now, dude, it's hunting season's here, and it's upon us. We stocked up fully side-by-sides, ATVs. You know, the Mahindra Rocks, is a new thing we just got since last time you guys were here. Um, it's a uh, the old Willys Jeep from World War II. Same exact frame and concept. Mahindra throws a little diesel engine in it, so the longevity's there. And now you've got a vehicle that you can go hunting in, herd your cattle in. I mean, make them street legal, and they'll run 55 miles an hour. But the best part, 35, 36 miles per gallon. Yeah, great stuff, man. You got tractors, you got four wheelers, you got motorcycles, you got trucks, you got boats, uh, you got gravely lawnmowers, generators all around us. Luke was right, wasn't it? This is kind of like I mean, a dude, guy's paradise. That's down our here. main goal is we want it to be a one stop shop. I mean, we want you to come by. There's been numerous times, Bob, guys come in, they'll buy a truck. Come over here, buy a tractor. The wife's looking at the car. They come over here and buy a four wheeler. <laughs> that happens all the time, man. And it's been it's been a blessing for us here, man. And just keep everything rolling and moving, like we do all the good low rate financing right now during hunting season. They push that hard, trying to get mm-hmm. them customers in the door. Special rebates on a lot of our Honda stuff right now as well. Yeah, it's really it's really cool. And then you take a second mortgage out on your home to afford. <laughs> this four your trucks. first time here, isn't it? Dan? Yeah. Well, no, I actually delivered parts here back when I worked for Courtesy Ford. So oh, I got bring you. Out parts. Yeah. 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 Have you, you didn't go to our new, our new service building down there yet, have you? No, I haven't. Always right here. Yeah, I was always delivering over there. Yeah, that's another uh, thing. Before we get to college football, uh, right now, <laughs> what, what is what is the season? For the Raven season Rose? right now, I mean, right now it's hunting season. So big big tractors, ATVs, side-by-sides, that's what's really pushing right now. Um, you know, and we got the duck boats out there. It's it's in that transition where they've slowed down a little bit, but we've got the duck boats ready and on deck for um, teal season getting here soon. Um, and then, of course, man, hunting season is big right now, running a lot of 0% for 80 four months on our tractor packages Mm -hmm. um low rate financing on our hondas too which is hard to come by nowadays on those but you know 4.9 5.9 on those um it's really been really been slamming the doors on them man just because of the finance and most banks are eight and a half to ten percent just a standard rate for you know 60 months so that's helping us a lot right now and you're still selling stuff all over the country oh yeah um i mean like i said dude i mean you've been here before where you've seen our delivery guys leaving and or you know we've got a guy in pennsylvania delivering a tractor you know we're nationwide and when we really mean that i mean that's that's the way we hit it i mean we we're not the old traditional guys that though you sign up once you just come in i mean we're gonna yeah. get on facebook and every time you sit in your recliner and you google atv of any kind tractors whatever you're, you're gonna see our guys up here pop up on your screen all right dakota honest answer to this question when is the last time someone came in your store and attacked all the food for the employees, the lunch for the employees, the way our associate here did today. The last time y'all were here. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
No chicken wing left behind. No, no chicken. Every wing time left. I'd looked around, he'd be stuffing another cookie in his a mouth. A little Debbie. Yeah, yeah. So we got the Ramy's, uh, the Ramy's uh, deli down there. Basically, our receptionist she goes every other day and gets fresh cookies and all that stuff for all the customers. So Kelly, Kelly treats himself well. Check his pockets before we. They're they're okay. crummy right now. He's going on a they're, they're, he's going on a trip later today, so I don't know. He's probably got a few snacks stashed away. <laughs> All right, let's do picks, David. Yeah. Tell tell, uh, tell our buddy here, Dakota, how we do this, and yep. let's get started. Yeah, we, we, we missed last week, um, but we're back this week. Um, we will get Kelly's picks because it's only fair that he still gets to pick these games. He's not just going to say it on the yeah. air. We're just a mic. We're, we're a mic set short. short today, Kelly um, be on but, yeah, what we do is we pick five Sunbelt games and then the national game of the week, and you pick the, the winner and the score, and then we point it based on the, the point spread and the over-under. So the standings are now – are unchanged since last time we said the standing. So I am in first place with 32 points. <laughs> Fig- <laughs> figures, huh, Kelly? Yeah. Um, 29 points for you, Mr. Bob, and then 26 for Kelly. So Kelly took a <laughs> step back last week. Um, but he, you're trailing behind, but there's no, there's no time like today to get back in. So let's start with Liberty at Appalachian State. Appalachian State's a three-and-a-half-point underdog, and the over-under is 61. So why don't you go first? I'm going Liberty. I like the Flames. All right, I'm Liberty. A, I'm, a, I'm a Liberty fan all the way. You got a score you want to throw up? I'm going to go 42-32. 42-32. to 32. I like App State 24-7. to 7. Ooh. Mm. See, App State looked horrendous against South Alabama last week, so I, I think Liberty takes that game uh, up there, and I'm, I'm going to pick them 24-20. to 20. Kelly? Um, I'm taking App. App, what's yep. the score? 21 17 for App for Kelly. Kelly Sanders. All right, Mr. Bob, Georgia Southern at Georgia State. Oh. Georgia State's a three and a half point favorite. The over under is 58. Who should I pick, Kelly? I'm taking Georgia Southern. Georgia okay. Southern's going to win it outright. They're going to win it 28 uh, 24. Kelly's got Georgia Southern. I like Georgia Southern myself. I just like the school. I'm going 21 14. 21 14. I'm going Georgia Southern 31 to 30. Get after that. There we go. <laughs> uh, Georgia State for me, I'm going to take them to 31 to 24 over hey, Georgia hey, Southern. Hey, he's just trying to rig the thing. And then you, you had a Georgia Southern 24 yeah. 20? Okay. All right. Louisiana at Wake Forest. Oh. I'm going to go with the Wake Forest there. They're still mad that them Rebels beat up on them, so they canceled the game You know, next year with them. Uh, so I've got, I got Wake Forest 35 to 10. I like Wake Forest too. I'm going Wake Forest 24 14. I'm going to take the Cajuns. Oh, all right. Cajun, Cajuns. On the road, 27 to 24. Right. Kelly's got the Cajuns, 27-24. I will also take Wake Forest, and I will say 41 to 10 over Ooh, Louisiana. Whoa. Way blow whoa. them out. They're, they're mad. They got beat whoa. up on by Ole Miss. All right, ULM at Troy. Troy's a six-and-a-half point favorite. The over-under is 45.5. Troy wins it outright. All right, Kelly's got Troy, 31 to 27. You know, I'm going with Monroe. And I like Monroe. Oh, did I say Troy? Yeah. yeah. I meant Monroe. Oh, Monroe, 31-27. Okay. And I like Monroe, 27-14. I like Troy, 24-21. I'm with the guys. I think ULM gets this game. Biggest Sunbelt win probably in a while for them. I'm going to say 21-17. to All right, South Alabama at LSU, 20-and-a-half <laughs> point favorite for the Tigers. <laughs> I'm gonna go LSU, but I don't. I think I, I, South Alabama's not played terrible ball, but I, I still think 45-14. Yeah, I say LSU 38-10. Uh, LSU wins, but South Al covers 30 to 27. Yeah, I'm with uh, Kelly. I'm, I'm gonna say 30 to 17 LSU. All right, so the game of the week is number two Georgia. Wait a minute, at- we're not gonna do Ohio State and Ellisville State School. <laughs> They're played in Tiddly Wink <laughs> University this weekend. Um, number two, Georgia at number four, Alabama. Ooh. Alabama is a one point underdog, and the over under is 49 and a half. Alabama wins it. 2017 for Alabama for Kelly. I like Roll Tide, baby. Roll Tide for 17 10. I'm going Alabama 24 17. Yeah, I got to take Georgia. I'll be the outlier. Georgia 21 21- to thirteen. Don't ever, over don't ever count the tide out. I, I would say that with Nick Saban, nothing, but I wouldn't say that. Tide. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's your it? picks. That's the picks for the oh, week. We're going to do Southern Miss and Open Day. Well, uh, <laughs> let, let's hope they win that one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, N- Nikki Haley lost an uncontested race in Nevada, so hopefully that's possible. <laughs> for um. <laughs> 
Dave, man, Dave has been on a roll this week, guys. I like this guy, man. That's what I'm talking about. No holds bar over here. Dave has been fired up since Monday, Dakota, let me tell you. All right, Dakota. Guy wants to come down here, wants to drive away in that Ram truck, pull a boat behind him. Can you set up all that financing oh, right man. here? Within 30 minutes, it's a done deal. You know, everything checks out on everything. Well, you can have just about anything. As long as you can get insurance, that's usually the longest thing that takes takes time. But, I mean, usually most car deals, one hour. Any of our boat, tractor, lawnmower, anything else with under 30 minutes mm-hmm. on the power sports side, you're in and out. We offer free <laughs> delivery on a lot of our tractors um, within 250 miles as well. So that's a really big killer for us, man. It just, I mean, you just buy everything from your recliner, deliver it to your door, sign and drive. And then we do DocuSign, too. So, I mean, mm-hmm. we can send everything over easy email and uh, never have to leave the comfort of your home having married a woman that grew up on a delta cotton farm i know about tractors a little bit man tractors are like this tractor sitting right here this is a you that's kelly's a, that's kelly's little tractor. kelly's going back i think for more going donuts going back chicken, guys. Chicken good we're gonna right. get an honor box no, for him, uh, yeah, an honor box <laughs> kelly just got up of the set to go get more food <laughs> more chicken that don't even belong to it he doesn't even wait till he sits back down what have you got in your hand now, Santa? <laughs> That's the Cajun fry, yeah? Uh, back to the tractors. Uh, a tractor like that can be... Obviously, real quickly, other than just farm use. I mean, per- that's your homeowner tractor. That's the one that's got the belly mower on it, man. You can cut the grass in the yard, pull the flower beds up, do whatever you need to do, unload mulch. The whole shoot match right there for the homestead. Come back and join us in the last segment. Yes, sir. We're Dakota Baker, everybody. We're at Ramey Motors. You just have no shame, do you? We'll be right back. <laughs> Robinson Electric Supply in Laurel is a wholesaler and distributor that has been powering our community for over 20 years. With everything from conduits to tape, tools to home automation devices, if you can think of it, we supply it. All you need to do is talk us through the project at hand and we'll ensure you're equipped to get it done right. To get all the electrical supplies you need, visit Robinson Electric at 519 North 13th Avenue or call us at 601-649-1317. The Eagle Hour, Southern Miss to the top. Welcome back, everybody. Happy Friday afternoon to you. The Super Talk Eagle Hour on the road. We're in Purvis, Mississippi, down here at Ramey Motors. Like uh, Luke Johnson always says, a grown man's wonderland. It really is an impressive and fun place to come. And uh, we always appreciate the guys having us down here. All right, Will, he's going to join us a little early today. We want to talk about high school football. And Will, I, I, I was telling you off the air, I had Neville Barr and Joey Hawkins. They just brought Kelly another plate of chicken. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Neville Barr and... Uh, and Joey Hawkins in the in the in the studio Thursday, and they were talking about the Madison Ridgeland Academy win over Oak Grove, and how impressed they are with the Madison Ridgeland High School football team. Your 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 thoughts about that game, Will, and Madison Ridgeland Academy? Yeah, there were several crazy games last week, but that MRA win over Oak Grove is almost, almost the word that comes to mind is historic. I can't remember an academy school beating a powerhouse program in such convincing fashion. We've obviously seen academy schools beat public schools. That happens all the time. But for an academy school to beat the defending champ of the largest classification is something that is very rare. I'm not sure it's ever happened before. Uh, MRA 52-14 win. That was just it's the latest in what's been kind of a weird season, guys, but that that was really a stunner. I mean, there's been three or four games this year where I've gone, wait a minute, that's got to be a mistake. I'm going to tell you, that one right there is one that will stick with me, and those kids at MRA, that's one they'll never forget right there. Uh, yeah. That that was incredible how, how 
how powerful of a win that was. Well, to be fair, I don't think Oak Grove's going to forget it either. <laughs> you know, no, no, uh, that was impressive, man. Yeah, as, as Ricky yeah. Ricardo used to say on the Lu- "I Love Lucy," they got some splaining to do, right? <laughs> 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 getting beat, uh, be, getting beat that badly, like Will said, you, you've yeah. got a reputation to uphold, um, and that just wasn't. The, but now Oak Grove will tonight against Laurel. Laurel's been a tough team to figure out. They've been so good for so many years, but they, they just have not been able to find themselves at all this year so far. Yeah. Yeah, they've been two of the more head scratchers this year, especially Oak Grove. Uh, you know, losing to Hattiesburg the week before. I know it was a close game, but still, Oak Grove. I just can't quite figure out what's going on with them. I know they've struggled to to stop the pass, and you know, this day and age, uh, with a lot of these high school teams, they're throwing the ball a lot more. There's teams that you know, like Poplarville or Jefferson Davis County or Picayune that, that line up and run the ball. 50 times a game and maybe throw it once. Those are getting more and more rare. Um, you're seeing a lot. We've seen up-tempo teams. I'm going to talk about two of them here in just a moment. But you've seen teams do no huddle, and they're running these hurry-up offenses and stuff. It's becoming more and more common, and Oak Grove this season has struggled to fix that. Now, does that mean that they're done for? No. Uh, they've struggled in the past before and went on to play the state championship game. So I'm confident that Drew calls him and – the group will get it figured out there. Uh, another one that was a bit of a head scratcher last week, not because of what happened in the game, but because of what happened during the game uh, that didn't involve football was Starkville. Uh, this game tonight, they're going to play Oxford in the Little Egg Bowl. And this game is interesting because Starkville head coach Chris Jones was handed a one game suspension following an altercation that d- took place after Starkville's 42 41 loss against. Louisville last Friday. Not only will the head coach miss tonight's game versus the Chargers, this is a big rivalry game. He's going to miss that game. But there are also multiple players facing suspension, and uh, they don't have, they haven't released all the details of how long the suspensions are going to be. But it's pretty crazy that you have a, a, a again, a powerhouse program like Starkville, number one, to lose to a 4A team. They're the best team in the state, but they, they're still a 4A team. Uh, but now the head coach is suspended, and he's got to go on the road and play a rival tonight, which is uh, kind of crazy. Uh, Who was the altercation the with, Will? Uh, it was between players, and basically he didn't oh. control his players. Uh, that's kind of what it boiled down to. And so, and that, that penalty did not come from the MHSAA, from what I understand. That penalty came from Starkville itself. They kind of uh, – uh, self-punish themselves there by taking him off the sidelines. This is a very accomplished coach, and because he couldn't control his players, basically, they've suspended him for at least one game. So you got wow. the Little Egg Bowl going on in Starkville and Oxford. Speaking of these up-tempo offenses, Brandon and Gulfport, two teams that run hurry-up, up-tempo type offenses. They can put a lot of points on the board. They're going to be playing tonight. I suspect this game will will be long. I think this is going to be a very long game because even though there's going to be a lot of, of, of passing in this game, and that always tends for to make a long game of it. The opposite is true in so-so tonight where you got Wes Jones hosting Poplarville. I think you guys know and everybody listening knows that uh, you better get your hot dog early and get to your seat in the bleachers because by the time the, the uh, whistle sounds, this one may be over with. Uh, two teams that really like to run the ball, run it early, run it often. And Wes Jones, guys, second longest winning streak in the state right now. Really? Yeah. The team with the longest winning streak is Louisville, who – this is pretty unprecedented. The number one team in the state right now is a 4A school. So they're kind of in the middle of the pack as far as classifications are concerned in size. But overall, they're the best team in the state. They're 4-0. They haven't lost a game since September of 2022. And they've been playing some tough teams along the way. They beat Starkville last week by a point. They played West Point, beat them by a point. Uh, to begin the season. Uh, and this one tonight, they're playing Knoxby County. It's called the Toothpick Bowl because of a former coach at both those schools. And I got to tell you about Louisville, one of the fun things about this team is uh, their backfield. Uh, we have quarterback Xavier Hunt. Xavier starts with an X. We have running back Zayden Jernigan. Zayden starts with a Z. And then we have the other running back. Anybody want to guess what his name is? I've got to guess it starts with a Y. 
No, his name is Xerion no. Haynes, which starts with an X and then a Z. So I don't think that's ever occurred before, but I thought that was interesting. Hey, you, you mentioned Poplarville and West Jones. Both of those schools, of course, have had rich traditions. But I think that both both fan bases will would probably say, even though these teams are still good, they're not as good as they were last year. Is that how do you, how would you respond? To that assessment. I think that's true. I think that's true. Uh, you know, Poplarville had that run where they were in either almost in the state title game or all, or close to it for the past couple of years, and they've struggled a little bit um, the past couple of years. Haven't done quite as well. They've still done well. Don't get me wrong, but haven't right, done as right. well as they had in the years before that. West Jones, on the other hand, yeah, probably not as dominant as they were last year. I still think with the way 6A is this season, I still think they have what it takes to win the state title. Uh, Grenada is going to be the big, and that's the team they played last year in the state championship game, maybe a rematch. Uh, that's going to be the team in the north part that's going to that's going to challenge them, I think, uh, in 6A. What? Well, when you're looking at the Jones County schools, I just I just want to salute South Jones because they really have been an, an asterisk in years past. I mean, they, they just have not been very good. And they're competing now. South Jones is putting a, a much better team on the field, and, and they're going to win some games. And I think that's uh, that, you know bring some of that uh, that pride back when Jack Thompson coached there for all those years. And, and um, so yeah. I, South is better. What's the secret up in Louisville, um, uh Will, why are they consistently so excellent? They they preach it. They practice what they preach, for one, and they've had just tremendous coaches. Uh, they Tyrone Shorter now there at Knoxby County, I mean at uh, Louisville, who came over from Knoxby County. They've had a series of head coaches that are winners, and they instill that kind of winning attitude. And they've traditionally been good, but – I'm going to tell you, they're they're a team where almost any given Friday night you don't want to play them. Uh, you know, MC Miller was there for a long time, won a couple state championships there. Now Tyrone Shorter. I mean, it's just it's that winning mentality, and they that we'll get back to that same thing I, I talk about all the time. They play really good teams early on in the season, and they sometimes will lose those games, but it builds a better team. By the way, guys, I know we have just a minute or so left. I wanted to highlight one player that you probably haven't heard of, or at least most people haven't heard of, in that Hattiesburg area, and that is Moses Cummings of Purvis. This is an incredible story. So Moses Cummings of Purvis, uh, Moses has parted defenses like the Red Sea this year. He's averaging 182 yards per game, already has 12 touchdowns this season. But Caleb Sailors uh, with Super Talk Mississippi News is writing a story about him and his biography. That kid is from a war-torn country in Africa, came over to America a couple years ago, and is now dominating on the gridiron. It's a pretty incredible story, and Caleb should have that, that story either today or tomorrow done. Moses Cummings of Purvis, great, great story. Well, that's good stuff. Will. Just, good. just real quick, Louisville. You talked uh, Louisville, Bob, and this is what we talked about. What Southern Miss may have been lacking at Louisville. They expect to win. Right. You don't have a choice. You right. go out there and you better win. Yeah. Years ago, when I was at the Delta, and I forget the coach's name, but he coached at Rosedale High School, and it was the same. Thing. He wore the bucket hat. Yes. Yeah, same I, remember, thing. Yeah. Every year they kicked everybody. Yeah, and and, that, and that's yeah. what Southern Miss fans said but that yeah. we have been lacking is the expectation right. to win. Hey, Will, we always enjoy our Friday conversations with you, buddy. We look forward to having you back on the Eagle Hour next week. Thank you so much. All right, Will East, everybody, program director. And all the scores tonight, right, on the scoreboard show? All the scores. 10 o'clock, high school scoreboard, most popular high school show in the state. Coming up next. More wings. (laughs) Talk a little Saints football. Stay with us. (laughs) You're tuned in to the Eagle Hour. The Eagle Hour. Southern Miss to the top. 
All right, everybody, welcome back to the show. Eagle Hour is at Ramey Motors in Purvis, Dakota. Baker will be joining us a little later. Patrick McGee is actually going to join us in the next segment. Uh, he was having a lunch, and uh, we got our times a little mixed up. But we've got, we've got a few minutes here from Ramey's that we want to just kind of talk about Southern Miss for a minute, which is the purpose of the show, obviously. Uh, all right, so off week, guys. Uh, Dima, what, what do you think the, was the focus of practice this week, even though they're not playing tomorrow? Yeah, I mean, just just kind of cleaning it up, getting healed up to, you know, they were uh, Tuesday morning, a lot of players were out, um, just kind of taking it easy. They generally do that for the bye weeks. Um, just trying to get the, the, the execution stuff uh, fixed for for next week. Obviously a big game, Sunbelt, uh, Sunbelt Slate opening up next week against UL. This is a game against Louisiana where Will Hall has consistently won against this team uh, in his tenure here. So uh, I think it's like 11 straight against the Cajuns or something like that. So it uh, feels like a, a big game. Obviously, it's a big game now. Every game's huge, and uh, especially for the perception of the program. But, yeah, I would just say just kind of cleaning up the, that, that uh the, the turnovers, all the things, and then getting healed up um, because they got a lot of players banged up in the first three weeks, mm-hmm. and uh, some players will be out next week, no doubt. But at least getting some of those players who were on that verge of being, you know, questionable or doubtful or whatever, kind of getting them back into flow for next week for a game week prep. We talked about this some um, earlier in the week, but uh, Dima Kelly, we throw this both out to you. You know, it's just it, it's hard to explain that you you're four games into the season and you've got three injured quarterbacks real quickly what what do you what did you see this week from a quarterback standpoint who was on the field who looked healthy who did not well i wouldn't say really any of them did i mean ethan crawford wasn't he was in a boot um he's not he's not even going to be reevaluated as coach hall told us for another four weeks so um yeah and then um uh, John White wasn't at practice on Tuesday when I was there. Um, and then Tate Rodemaker looked like that ankle was really uh, hurting him. Uh, and some of his rolls out looked like he was sort of limping. So didn't look good in that scenario. Colin McCormick would be their next option in the back end. Uh, he's the four-string quarterback. Um, you know, I, I think Jack Jack Duggan told us that upwards of 20-plus quarterbacks have taken the snap since Will Hall has been the head coach at Southern Miss, which is an insane number when you think about it. 20 quarterbacks. 20-plus, yeah. I mean, you think about that first season, they ran through, what, 13, I think, so with the super back, and then they brought on the you know graduate assistant or whatever. It, it was it was a mess in that first year. But, but yeah, I don't know. It just seems like the kryptonite for this team, and you'd think when you have three pretty solid options, you'd think that if, even if you, on the off chance, lose one, but the fact that you're right, they've lost all three again, it's just as unbelievable. The, the timing of this off week could not have come at a better time. No, I agree. Be- because not only for the physical parts that Dima was just talking about, but let's face it, anybody that's played competitive sports, when things aren't going well, the backbiting starts, right? Some of it's maybe public, some of it's maybe behind the scenes, but people are all on edge, Players are on edge. Coaches are on edge. And the backbiting starts with that. That can spread like a cancer, right? So this was a this was a chance now this week to everybody just catch their breath. Let's collect ourselves again because I know there's going to be people that are going to think I'm apologizing. I'm not. But, but to play for the Sun Belt Championship, you have to win the games in the Sun Belt, which the Eagles haven't played yet. So I, I, don't, I don't think there's going to be a great turnaround in this team, but the fact of the matter is they haven't played yet. So hopefully, for everybody involved, there is going to be a reset here, um, and this next week is going But if you don't have a healthy quarterback, and again, we've talked about this, yeah. if, you, if it's peewee football, you know, Pop Warner, if you don't have a quarterback, it's going to be tough to win in any league. Mm-hmm. So that's something that, that they're going to have to to figure out one way or the other. I, I mean, hate to keep saying this, but the game Saturday's big, Nick. A, a week from today with Louisiana, you got to get this ship turned around. or And maybe they will, and I hope they do, but, Dima, if you don't get this ship turned around in the next game or two, man, it's going to be a long fall. Yeah, I mean, to me it has the feelings of the South Alabama game from last year next, next week against Louisiana. Really? Yeah, I mean, not necessarily that bad, but I just like – the feelings are still there that I had last week. It was a weird, you know, middle of the season Tuesday night game at South Alabama. You had most of your secondary out. You know, a lot of people were banged up. The The perception on the team was already low, and you're playing a pretty good team 
in South Alabama last year, and they just looked completely non-competitive. And the, the point of what I'm trying to say here is they had a week to prepare for that South Alabama game. That was their oh, bye week, oh. you know, the last 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 year. And they're going to have, what, 13, 12 to 13 <coughs> days to prepare for this Louisiana game. If they're not competitive and they get run off the field, you're right. I mean, it's a huge game, but every game is big now, but – I'm just the, the perception of the team is almost like what Kelly's saying. It's like a chance for everybody to take a breath, and then all the tensions back next week. And then if you, they just blow it, you know, then okay. the ship might be sinking. Well, let's look at it the opposite. Let's say they prepare, they're rested. You get a healthy quarterback, and they beat the raging Cajuns. How much does that help going down the stretch? I mean, I don't, I don't think it helps at all. I mean, you know, it, it definitely takes the the sting of the Jacksonville State loss away, but you still got what seven games left after that, or eight games left left after that. Um, you're still sitting at two and three. You got tough road games coming up. Um, you know, I, I think that you know the job security of the head coach would be would be more safer than it would be if he loses. But I see. I think. It, I think. It, I respectfully disagree. I think it would be big if. First of all, the Eagles are in the Cajuns' head, right? Louisiana can't figure out why they can't beat Southern Miss because everybody else apparently is doing it. They just haven't been able to figure it out. So if the Eagles can win this game next week, confidence breeds uh, competence. We've talked about that. Man, if they could just get one thing to go right, you might be surprised. Might not, but you might be surprised at how far that would go in having them improve the rest of the way because, again, all we've heard is how good the players are. Right, so but it hasn't been translating on the field. So stranger things have happened now. I agree. You know, I mean, I Lyle Lovett married uh, uh, for a couple of days. <laughs> Julia Roberts. Yes, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so I mean, I never thought that would happen. Uh, just... Let's let's quiz our young protege here. <laughs> Lyle Lovett. I don't know who that is. Julia Roberts. I know who that is. Uh, Notting Hill. Great movie. Okay, okay. there we go. That's there not we go. Bad. What's your favorite sports movie of all time? Sports movie. Oh, I don't know. Probably either Rocky Four or Rudy. Rocky Four. Rocky Four. How do you pick Rocky Four? Because all because I'm Russian. All first of all, oh, but second is oh. the best Rocky. It is so good. Was that the oh. one Dolph Lundgren was in? Yes. Uh, it's Ivan Drago. Okay. Who? Ivan Drago. That was the bo- his Listen character. To that accent. Say yeah. that again. Yeah. Ivan Drago. <laughs> do you speak Russian? I, I do not anymore. So anyway, the way the world's going, we better all start learning. <laughs> I'm so sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> Dima may be introducing us to some people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think mine was the original Bad News Bears with Walter Matthau. You do like that. You actually went to where that was done. Yeah, that fi- where they filmed the movie, the, the actual diamond yeah. uh, in California. Well, I'm a huge Denzel Washington fan. and went- Training day? No. Uh, the, 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 the Titans. Titans. The Titans. Yes, okay. uh, the Titans, yeah. I, I love anything Denzel Washington does. Or Dakota Fanning, <coughs> who, I, by the way, just watched in another series. I need to tell you. Yeah, about. Dakota Baker is no Dakota Fanning. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It's, it's about as opposite as it gets. <laughs> All right, Dima. Well, you know, maybe this will be a good week. I certainly hope so. We don't want to come across as negative. We, we support Southern Miss, obviously. It's a lot of work to do, right, bro? Yeah, yeah. You don't want to come across as negative, but you got to tell it the way it is that this is a big spot, um, big a big low point in Southern Miss football right now, and the, the ship would be less sinking if they would beat Louisiana. But again, you have so many more contests coming up that it could just go right back down into the spot it's in now, just because of the the, the opponents they have coming up yeah. on the schedule. We're going to be focused some next week on basketball. Who all did you interview, Kelly? What basketball kids did you the, interview? The two backcourt guys, Andre Curbelo and uh, Neftali Alvarez. And um, I'll tell you, the basketball team, not, I don't know how many wins it's going to turn into, but physically they look terrific. You know, they talked about uh, how, um, you know, they've reshaped uh, a lot of their, their bodies. They've, you know, changed diets and all these sorts of things. Mm-hmm. So that they're, and, uh, and Neftali says that foot. People should not worry about his foot. It is 100%, 100% and doesn't even feel like anything has ever happened. Uh And I said, well, you just have to look. The last two years, 
But yeah, the last two years, so. something has gone wrong with that foot. Yeah, so yeah. There's, there has to be a natural Everybody fear. has their own opinion. I believe he's the most dynamic player on the basketball team. Yeah, and then getting back to Najee Harris from Arkansas. I he, think that's big. That, um, his his mid-court, mid, uh, mid-range shots, he was taking them in practice the other day. And I don't even know if he missed one. Like, you know, I mean, just yeah. every single one just straight to the net. And we talked with Marshant Kenny yesterday about guys transferring out. Well, there, Najee Harris is a great story where he did transfer out, went through the transfer portal, went to some other schools, and and then realized, you know what, maybe it wasn't so bad in Hattiesburg. And they welcomed him back because of the way he handled it. And and Coach Ladner was telling us, I think on the show, either on the show or in the interviews, you know, he's a seventh-year player. Doc Sadler recruited him. That's how long he's been here. That's that's just unbelievable. Seventh-year player. Crazy. Looking forward to basketball. And I'm looking forward to the Raging Cajun football game next week, guys. I don't mind telling you. I'm, I, I wish they were playing it tonight. Me too. Me too. All right. When we come back, we're going to cook up briefly with Patrick McGee down in New Orleans. Dakota's going to come back here and rejoin us. And we're going to wrap up Friday. Ramey Motors, Purvis. Now, Got, da- Dakota Fanning? Did I say Dakota Fanning? No, no. Oh, no, no, no. Hey, I no, I'd be pretty excited. Get, yeah, wish get, we'll get that ch- chicken wing out of your here. mouth, Kelly. Get that <laughs> yeah, chicken wing out of your yeah. mouth. Well, let's let's get the coat of fanning. I'm all for that. <laughs> yeah, we'll be right. Robinson Electric Supply in Laurel is a wholesaler and distributor that has been powering our community for over 20 years. With everything from conduits to tape, tools to home automation devices, if you can think of it, we supply it. All you need to do is talk us through the project at hand and we'll ensure you're equipped to get it done right. To get all the electrical supplies you need, visit Robinson Electric at 519 North 13th Avenue or call us at 601-649-1317. Southern Miss to the top. To the top. You're tuned in to the Eagle Hour. As some new television ads you will see in the Saints game Sunday indicate, this show's in its 10th year, Dakota. Dakota's back with us from uh, Ramey Motors. And in 10 years. The Eagle Hour, 10 years. 10 years. I've seen Kelly eat a lot. Oh, I don't know that I have ever seen Kelly attack a client's food bank like he has yours today if you're listening good you can hear kelly celebrate yeah he's, I getting, he's yes. getting the chicken he's out of eaten his at least two chickens i only have one thing to say guys <laughs> <laughs> excuse me all i can think of is the scene in gremlins when they're eating the chicken after midnight that's what it sounds like so go home and watch that <laughs> Oh, he didn't even get into the biscuit yet. He just got done with them thighs. Michael, it's just, it's just been really something to watch. And uh, Dakota just brought him another plate of food. Damn, he ate it during the break. <laughs> yeah, well, you went, person- went live the last segment. Some media personalities, you have to say, lock up your, your daughters. Kelly is lock up yeah. your food. Well, Dakota has informed us that they're going to put up signs before we come back that say employees only in certain parts of the building. And keep your... Hands and feet away from. <laughs> yeah, we're, we apologize. Patrick is tied up now that he's the sports editor of the Times. Picky Uni's pretty busy, but we'll catch back up with Patrick next week. Man, no that was problem. disappointing though. The Saints last week. I mean, you really Real thought you really, yeah, you really thought they could, but but you were also right, Bob. When the Eagles went in there, man, they were slobber knocking each other. Did you I, see any of that game? Because a little bit of it, but the thing that I read more into that kind of took me by surprise was the Saints have been doing good. Yeah, know, for the first two weeks. Nobody in New Orleans for 18 days got murdered. When the Saints are doing good, they say crime what? on the street. I'm telling you, that's what I read up, and, and that blew my mind. I think they made it 20 days total without one. And that's saying something for New Orleans. <laughs> I mean, wow. that's what blew my mind. And there was, people wow. weren't talking about have you been about Have you been listening to the Kamala Harris commercials? No, no, it was a big thing on the Saints page I followed. Man, I was like, holy crap. Man, what's that's the murder rate right in Hattiesburg right now? <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Like oh, things are going, it's uh, oh, not good. Oh, I'm gonna between Michael and Dima. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be afraid to go on campus. Oh, is this a Southern Miss show? <laughs> What's the murder rate? <laughs> I had to. I apologize, but I had uh, to. Okay, that's open. all right, Michael. That's okay. Uh, 
you're right, though, man. That, you you see NFL games like that was kind of a so-so game last night. That Saints Eagles game was electric, yeah. buddy. Those big dudes were hitting one another. That and was that, fun, Kelly. And now they go to what Atlanta? They got Atlanta. Yeah, Dirty Atlanta. birds. Yeah, and and you know Atlanta on paper is pr- probably now is not as good as as New Orleans, but but Atlanta always seems to have uh, the Saints number. You know, well, the Falcons um, have a good quarterback now, so you know Kirk Cousins is a good quarterback. Yeah, I've always been a Cousins fan. I like the fact that he drives a minivan to, to work. I mean, that's that's yeah, saying something. He's, he's a super a subtle guy, like yeah. you would never know. He reminds me a lot, like we talked earlier, like Brian Dozier, just a real cool guy, down to earth. Just, just, just you know, we were guy. talking about Brian Dozier earlier, and you said something that that struck me the first time I met Brian Dozier. I mean, I love the guy. He's a wonderful guy. I looked at him and I said, that guy is not big enough to be an all-star in Major League Baseball and hit home runs the way he is. When he was hitting all them homers, we go to church together. He parks right by us most mornings. And then I'm sitting there and I said, Bree, you do realize that that man right there led the league this year in homers in the American League. Right, so let me ask it's you, you played baseball at a high level. How does a guy physically as small as Brian Dozier have that much power? Man, I think it's in his hands, like all in his. He was so quick to the ball and hips. I mean, dude, he was. It was in. It was insane to watch him because when I was getting recruited by Southern, I'm up there on recruitment trips watching Dozier play. You know, he was a couple of years older than me there, but man, it was. I mean, but I was the same way as you. Everybody's like, oh, he's a great player, and he goes and they develop him even more in the minor leagues. And dude, all of a sudden he hits the scene and just boom. Yeah. yeah. Dakota Baker played at a high level. He also played high. Just clean all <laughs> No, he did not. He, he did eats not. your food, and then he comes <laughs> He's, I'm telling you. Yeah, I don't on, behalf, do on, on behalf of the Eagle Hour, I do want to apologize to you and the owners down here. Hey, that's I hope right. this is not the end of our business relationship. No, no. I'm sure this won't be the last time he eats our food either. So. No, we, we're, we're ready to reimburse you for the food if we need to. Today. Hey, some legitimate news, though, you guys. The, the hurricane that has, is wreaking havoc up along the eastern seaboard, the, one of the the uh, Sun Belt games has already been canceled. Yes, we should point uh, that Liberty out. Liberty and App State have decided they're not going to play their right. – I just checked that on the computer, and it's pretty rough. Like, yeah. i just seen the streets up yeah. there, and it is bad. That's what I was looking when he asked me earlier. I'm like, I don't even – or no, he asked me about the game. I was like, I'm looking at my phone, and it says cancel. <laughs> like, yeah, I and, phone. and I would – and I think this is probably just the beginning. I think there's probably yeah, going to be I mean, a lot the, of other the Braves, games. I mean, I'm a big Braves guy. They canceled their games this weekend. I mean, it's, it's the it's whole – It's a big storm. That's a big storm, man. And what's big about that Braves series is not just for the Braves, but who they're playing. Yeah. You I know, mean, they're, they're playing the Kansas City Royals, who are deadlocked right now with the Tigers. Well, we got the Mets, too. Us and the Mets are half a That's game right. out in the East right. and Here for the go, wild card. So, I mean, yeah. hey, the Tigers, hey, I'm with the Tigers. I like the Tigers. Um, you know, Jacoby Jones from Richmond used to be there, but I like their turnaround. That's that's yeah. good to see. I, I, I'm not a Tigers fan, but I like what they're doing. Next and I thing you know, them. you're going to say Cincinnati's going to win a football game. <laughs> no, let's look. <laughs> Jamar Chase needs to get off his high horse and go play some football. Crack, <laughs> crack doesn't smoke itself. The Bengals are <laughs> – the Bengals are going to get beat by the Panthers this weekend. Yeah. And, and Michael, how about them Bears? Michael? Michael, you there? <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks, Dakota. Hey, we appreciate you Randy guys enjoying having you. Purpose. Come check them out, guys. They've got something for everybody down here. When he said the show's over, is that us or for the Bears? <laughs> for the Bears. <laughs> for both, actually. <laughs> we'll be back Monday if, if you'll join us. <laughs> Until then, Southern Miss. To, to the, the top. top. Mississippi Media Production.